finals SAQ4, posterior fossa craniotomy. The case. A 34-year-old man is scheduled for a posterior fossa tumor excision. A. List patient positions that might be employed for this operation, 10 marks. Possible positions include sitting, lateral, prone, supine, and park branch. B. What potential intraoperative problems are associated with posterior fossa craniotomy? 25 marks. Problems associated with the surgery include venous air embolism and paradoxical air embolism. Air entrainment can happen whenever the venous sinuses are open. There is increased risk of VAE if open sinuses are elevated, as occurs in sitting position, due to increased pressure differential between them and the atmosphere. Cardiovascular instability may occur due to stimulation of cranial nerve nuclei and other brainstem structures and may present as hypo or hypertension, bradyarrhythmia, or tachycardia, and arrhythmias. Other problems include bleeding, cerebellar hematoma, brainstem damage with damage to respiratory, cardiovascular centers, and cranial nerve nuclei, long tract damage, CSF leak, meningitis and wound infection. Problems associated with the sitting position for the airway, tube displacement, remote airway, ideally use reinforced ETT well secured to the face with connections jammed in, and jugular venous obstruction due to flex neck causing laryngeal and tongue edema. Cardiovascular issues include air embolism, venous or arterial, due to surgical field above the heart, non-collapsible veins, incidence is up to 50% in neurological surgery, mostly insignificant. Anticipation. Discuss contingency plan with the surgeon, nurses, and medical assistants. Set ETCO2 alarm at 5 mmHg below steady state. Consider central venous line and precordial Doppler in the room. Hypotension may occur due to reduced venous return. Lines are remote. Ensure intravenous catheters and arterial lines are long, visible, and same site as the anesthetist. Fluid warmer connected preoperatively, and drug line connections are secured. Neurological issues associated with the sitting position include spinal cord or brain stem ischemia due to head flexion and hypotension. Measures to prevent this include metaraminal infusion, arterial line with transducer at the brainstem level, raising the patient slowly and flexing the hip. Sciatic nerve damage may occur due to stretch from thigh flexion with knee extension. Common peroneal nerve may be damaged by compression. Pneumocephalus may occur. Cervical spine fracture dislocation may occur due to body pulling on the pins. Cutaneous musculoskeletal issues include compartment syndrome and lumbosacral pressure sores. Problems associated with other positions. Regarding the airway, there is risk of tube dislodgement, especially when the patient is moved after induction. Each position has its unique pressure points, for example, elbow, knee and ankle for lateral position and genitalia and knees for prone position. Each position has its individual risk for nerve palsies, for example, brachial plexus compression in lateral position, brachial plexus stretch and ulnar nerve damage in prone position, brachial plexus stretch and common peroneal compression with park bench position. Other specific complications for prone position includes GI reflux, dependent airway swelling, reduced venous return and hypotension, corneal damage, central retinal artery occlusion, ischemic optic neuropathy, etc. C. What monitoring techniques can specifically detect the presence of venous air embolism during surgery? And for each method used, give the features that would indicate the diagnosis, 40 marks. Transesophageal echocardiogram demonstrates air in the right side of the heart. In the presence of patent foramen ovale, it can detect 
air in the left side of the heart as well. Transesophageal echocardiogram is not necessarily suitable for long operations where the head is flexed. Precordial Doppler enables sounds to be heard if air is present in the right side of the heart. Other non-specific signs include reduced ETCO2, reduced blood pressure, and increased pulmonary arterial pressure. D. How would you manage a significant venous air embolism in this patient? 25 marks. First, declare medical emergency and alert the theatre team. Call for help and adopt an ABC approach, assessing and managing issues simultaneously. The aims of management are prevent further air entry by flooding the surgical site with saline, provide fluid load, lower the patient so that the surgical site is below the right atrium if possible, and apply sustained positive airway pressure until this is all achieved. Consider compressing jugular veins. Reduce the size of the venous air embolism, stop nitrous oxide if it's being used, and administer 100% oxygen. Consider aspirating air from the right atrium via a central line. Overcome mechanical obstruction by left lateral or trendelenburg positioning, which may help force the bubble above the right ventricular outflow tract. Inotropic support may be required. If the patient suffers cardiac arrest, chest compressions may help disperse the bubble. Additional information on the prone position. Issues for the airway, it is remote, risk of dependent swelling, tube migration is common. Measures include secure the ETT, awake extubation and check for cuff leak prior to extubation. Issues for breathing, reduced ventilation due to chest wall compression, reduced oxygenation due to reduced FRC. Measures include proper table with the abdomen free and not compressed, applying PEEP titrated against PaO2 and compliance. Issues for circulation. Abdominal compression results in IVC obstruction, reduced venous return, reduced cardiac output and hypotension. IVC obstruction leads to increased epidural venous pressure and increased bleeding if spine surgery. For resuscitation, conventional CPR is difficult to be carried out unable to apply magnet to pacemaker. Measures include having a proper table with the abdomen free. Positioning injuries include that to the face, eyes, brachial plexus, ulna nerves, breast, and male genitals. Measures include proper table with adequate padding, foam block for the head, not horse shoe, and check every 30 minutes for the face and eyes. If upper limbs are extended, ensure less than 90 degree shoulder abduction and elbows are padded. If upper limbs are by the side, ensure thumbs down to avoid excessive pronation. Inform the patient of the risk of positioning injuries. Injuries during transfer may occur. Ensure five people minimum for transfer. Ensure A, B, Cs are stable prior to transfer. Ensure the bed and table are stable. Disconnect both monitoring and airway prior to transfer and reconnect them back after transferring. Blindness may occur, 90% due to anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, probably due to hypoperfusion, 10% due to central retinal artery occlusion and direct compression. Other causes include corneal injury, stroke and acute angle closure glaucoma. Differential diagnosis for post-op vision loss includes AION, PION, stroke, and PRES. Risk factor for blindness includes elderly patient, male, obese, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, positioning, direct pressure on the globe, head down and Wilson frame, increased duration of surgery, and increased bleeding during surgery. Pathophysiology includes direct compression, increased venous pressure and dependent positioning, Reduced arterial pressure due to bleeding, anesthesia, and IVC compression, and reduced CaO2 due to bleeding, hemodilution, and hypoxemia. Treatment includes elevation of the head of the bed, optimized blood volume, blood pressure, and hemoglobin, 
acetazolamide, mannitol, and frusamide may be tried along with glucocorticoids and hyperbaric oxygen. Prevention includes proper table with abdomen free, avoid excessive curvature, foam block for the head, check face and eyes every 30 minutes, minimize dependent positioning, optimize oxygenation and ventilation, optimize circulation with fluids, blood and presses, inform patients about the risk 